has not. The unpredictability feels normal to you because right. that's what you grew up with. You know, they beat my pops up. I just remember him coming upstairs. Hey guys, and welcome back to Little Black Book. You know what time it is. Uh, I told you guys about marriage boot camp, uh, Vado Tahiri. I also talked about Willie and Shonda in another one as well. Guys, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for notification of the uploads, and you know what you know. If you are a returnee, then you already know what to do. You got the minerals, you got the minerals. Let's get into it. Mineral gang, mineral gang, mineral gang, yes, minerals. All right, listen, boom. Um, so yeah, obviously you guys already know I've spoken about Vado and Tahiri for the last few weeks. Um, we're coming to this particular episode. I think obviously had Vado and Tahiri separated, they were at opposite ends and um, different places. And obviously, Dr. Ish um, visited Vado, got him to come back into the group in some shape or form um, to be a part of the group. Um, again, you guys already know my feelings and thoughts of this. I feel like um, all the blame has been squarely shouldered on Vado's neck. Like, for instance, Vado has left the house. Um, but he's been brought back in as if he's done the only dirt. And so I felt I felt really bad for Vardo because I know that he can't say anything because you don't want to say nothing and the blogs get you, Bree. Like, oh, yo, I didn't really do anything dirty. She did something dirty to me. So you got to let the rest of us say it. So let me say it for you, okay? Uh, yeah, the fact that you have to do an apology, okay, and Tahiri hasn't is a big issue, okay? And I'm going to advise that Vardo, listen, Unless the unless they address their issues, Vado shouldn't be in this relationship, never to hear it. But you've heard me say this before, all right? Because what I'm sensing is this, there will be a sense of resentment coming. Why am I saying that? Because no matter how, you know, like, yes, he asks his mom and his mom says, there's no, no, no matter what, you should never put your hands on. And she's right. And I told her, and she like, that's not an excuse. Good for her. Because it's not. She raised me right, so she let me know early. No matter what, right? And I'm with that, no matter what. But unfortunately, something did happen before that. Someone's throwing apples at you. And that behavior is speaking about their behavior. And so there can be a, sense of, there can be a, a slice of resentment in the relationship going forward if he feels like, yes, he's apologized. Yes, he knows he's done wrong. Yes, he did dirty, but she doesn't own up to her part. Yeah? Because there's nothing more infuriating than being in a situation where someone doesn't own up to their part in the mess. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not I'm not clean here, but you're not clean. And so if you don't bring up, if you don't own up to your own mess, and you know, and she kept on, and you know what frustrated me was the fact that she kept on again, still adding fuel to the fire by like, yeah, you know, he needed to be separated because he needed to learn a lesson. I hope this is an apology. Oh yeah, this better be an apology. Uh, because you know um, what he did, he needs to know it weren't right. What you did, do you think was right? Like, they are making him a spare, a, a, a scapegoat to the show. I don't know for viewings or whether it's just, it's, it's just whether Dr. Ish and Judith or whatever, sorry, the judge, this is their kind of viewpoint. But the truth of the matter is, like, there needs to be, and if we're here to mend relationships, we're here to mend uh, marriages. Let me see to hear he apologize to Vardo too. I'm sorry for throwing apples at you. No, you've actually just admonished her. Um, and so the reason I'm talking about this is because her behavior also stems from childhood. Yeah. Wow. And I remember everybody in my grandmother's house um, on their knees. And then they had guns in every like door, kind of. They were looking for drugs and money. Good, the same as his. Right, so we see the little, and I, I really appreciate this uh, particular, uh, you know, challenge. Um, and you know, even Shonda said itself herself, her, herself, this is the best challenge they've had. Why? Because it delves into why they do what they do. You see, Many people want to hear why they do what they do. The why question is so more important than the what, the where, the how. Okay, you threw apples at me. Yes, I was angry. But why did you feel the way that you did? When you begin to explain that, you begin to give insight and understanding. The Bible says, um, let your eyes, uh, I pray that your eyes of your understanding shall be opened. Why? Because when you begin to have understanding, you begin to move in a completely different light. When you understand who God is, when you understand who Jesus is, when you understand his love, the way that you operate is different because you're understanding. You understand? You're beginning to stand. I don't know. Un no, 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 I'm not going to do that. You know when you say, should I be doing like a church? Like no, let's not do that. Um, but you are beginning to understand something. You're beginning to be, and I would say stand, because you're beginning to stand rather than just, you know when people say, I fall in love. But when you get older and you have more relationships, you begin to realize, I don't fall in love. 
I stand in love. Why? Because I need to see the whole playing field. I need to see what's coming, what's going. I, need to, I can't be just falling in love and, 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 and doing it blindly and naively. No, I'm aware now, I'm experienced. I'm going to stand on my own two feet. And so when we see Vardu and Tahiri um, and they go back into their various pasts, obviously Tahiri's dad was locked up. Um, you know, she, had, she grew up on violence. You know, there was violence around her in the environment. She was violence in her home. Her dad was a drug dealer. So this behavior of uh, misconduct, um, this behavior of aggression, this behavior of, of, of bad boy and not changing has been written in her DNA because of when she was young. And it has to be uncoded by exposing it and letting her see, hey, you from your childhood have accepted this behavior now because of what you saw when you were younger. The bad boys that you're chasing are the reason are the same as the bad man, or I should say bad boy, bad men, the father figure that you looked up to with so much admirality, even though you knew he was doing drugs. Yeah? So now you see a rapper, or a, you know, a, a, a rapper who talks about guns, killing, crime, whatever, whatever you see, and you're still attracted because you are were you were given love and adoration by a father who did something similar. And so therefore you're not fit for. But to me, it was yeah, normal. Yeah, it was normal. Like, I got both sides of it. The street smarts and the book smarts. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to see a lot of mm -hmm. Fearful. You enter these spaces because you're comfortable, right? And so now, um, you know, out of, and again, out of fear, okay, I believe that Tahiri is now, re as out of fear, Tahiri reacts in a physical manner. That's what she's learned to how to communicate. When she was younger, that's probably how she learned how to communicate. Violence. That's what got you your way. That's what got you to understand something. And so we see her crying because, uh, you know, she mentioned the fact that... He's in jail now. The other kids think it's a grown-up school. But I know better. It's jail. I can't do it. I have to... She just wanted to hear her dad just say, I love you. She wanted to give her dad a big hug. She couldn't do that, right? The admiration and affection for her father, okay, um, means that obviously other guys who follow a same, similar pattern, you may not... You will not. You will not want something different, right? If you felt loved and 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 compassion from this person who was doing this thing, then you then you will look at other people and think, well, why they're also capable of doing what my father did, love me, right? And the same can be said when the person's absent. When the person's absent, we can begin to search for somebody who was absent. We can begin to search for similar people who were absent. It's almost like as if the the the, the soul knows. Like you never, let's say like, you know, your dad left or whatever, but you never, um, you know, your dad never, was never around to you anyway. But somehow you pick up a guy who's got similar traits to your dad or you pick up, you pick up a man because you like the fact he's got father figure behavior, right? And when you see that father figure behavior, then you begin to like that person because they're offering you something that you are aware and comfortable with. And again, I think that's what Tahiri's position is. Vardo is very interesting as well. You know, his stepfather, who he liked and loved, um, he went to prison uh, and got deported. Uh, so he, he got deported. You know. What did he get deported for? Drugs. So that's how I got this boss, free dad. But then years later, I ended up being in jail. And that hurt him as well, um, because obviously it seemed like he had a really great relationship with his father, uh, you know, his, his stepfather. Um, and not only that, you know, uh, you know, he, you know, his dad got picked up by the police and everything like that. So I guess seeing all that, seeing that growing up on drugs again, growing up on violence, growing up on on, on normality of of this madness, again, he's willing to settle for someone like Tahiri. Because I would never settle for someone who raised their hand to me. The moment you raise your hand to me, I'm I'm gone. I'm doing a me, you know what I'm saying? Scuba wolf, I'm out the door, blur. You know what I'm saying? I'm not there no more. Can't chat to man. I'm freedom, you understand? And the reason why is because I don't find that to be normal. I don't find it to be acceptable. I don't find that to be something I want to condone, ever. You know what I'm saying? But they're willing to admonish, they're willing to admonish each other and stay in this relationship because both of them have been exposed to abusive traits. And therefore, they're more accommodating because they've seen it before, they didn't die. All right, I will continue. I will choose somebody who's similar to that. Um, and so there's, there's a need to, to undo this uh, 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 feeling. There's a need to undo this uh, history, okay? Um, so that when the next relationship comes, they're not operating from a childhood. They're operating from an adult who understands their childhood and makes a conscious choice to change it, okay? So it's often hard. If you don't know what choices you have to make, if you don't know you have to make different choices to what your, 
you know, your past uh, or your pres oh sorry, your past or your parents or you know family members did, then you're bound to make the same mistakes. So it's about knowledge, understanding, and and coming into that wisdom to make a different choice to what your parents did. Do you know what I mean? Um, and that's and that takes that takes time, it takes effort, and it takes a reflection as well. You know. Um, so yeah, um, I think that was interesting to watch them too. And I love obviously I love the fact that the kid was. I don't know if, I don't know if um, she asked for a hug or the kid was just self-aware, came and gave her a big hug as she was crying, you know, and, and obviously it's, it's evident that, you know, her childhood is traumatic, it's evident her childhood is painful, it's evident her childhood is not always pleasant, and, you know, like, like Dr. Ish said, we operate from our childhood, and what happens is this, in relationships, we go into default mode, yeah, whatever way we were dealing things with the kid, and I, and I think you said this to Shanda, we, or to Fedra, we try to solve things as adults that we were trying to solve as kids. So when we don't have the answer as a kid, when we get older, we try to solve that puzzle. That's why you choose similar men or you choose similar women. That's why you choose certain, certain similar people because you didn't solve those things when you were young. Like you didn't get, you didn't get told you were, like for me, I didn't get told I was great, amazing, da, da, da. so I cho I chosen a woman who now gives me that admiration, that gives me that affection, that gives me those words of comfort. I'm attracted to that. Why? Because I never got them when I was younger. I'm trying to solve something that I never had or never could answer when I was young. So yeah, guys, with Tahiri and Vado, I don't know how you guys feel. Um, you know, I just feel like obviously it's, it's still unfair at the moment, but I understand why they had to leave. Uh, push Vada out because it is violent behavior. So guys, I don't know make sure you like share subscribe click on that bell button for notification of the walk up Lords we appreciate you say locks say loaded marriage bootcamp. We're gonna do Shonda and Willie after as well more love